Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham show. You know, I hear a lot of people say someday, and I hear a lot of people say, I'll be happy when, but guess what? If you don't decide to be happy, that someday may never come. And that thing that you want to do eventually may never come. So today we're going to talk about how if you want success, you need to be happy. And this isn't just success in business. This is success in life and business, in relationships, and really every part of your life, everything that surrounds you. My Brit Gutka, welcome to The Robin Graham Show. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I am so happy that you are here with me all the way from Denmark. Yes, it's it's cold and wet and dark. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're in the U.S. We have daylight saving time now, too. And it's dark by like quarter to five, five o'clock. And I'm ready for bed. So I get that yeah. darkness is not what I like. <laughs> me neither me neither. We go like it's 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 not bedtime yet. It's not even dinner time and we're ready for bed, right? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. So we need to nail this before it gets dark because it's four o'clock here and in about 45 minutes it's pitch black. <laughs> yeah. So we got we gotta get going then. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. So, so <laughs> listeners, before we dive in, I just want to tell you a little background here. Um my Brit and I met through a speaking engagement we did that was a global global um, women's summit, I guess, and it was inter it was international. There were all these amazing people there, but my Brit really jumped off the screen at me. Her energy is so heavy, so positive, so joyful, and she always had something profound and great to say. And after we had done the speaking engagement, we had a Zoom call and just talked and got to know each other more and we just really connected and that's one of the most beautiful things about zoom and all this virtual technology is that we're all the way across the world from each other and yet we can be friends and I can bring her to you to talk about something so incredibly powerful as happiness so I'm going to turn the mic over to my Brit and have her tell you a little bit more about her journey, how to get to where she is today as a business coach. Yeah. And personal development coach. And person development coach. Yes. Um, it started with me. I think I had the same idea about what happiness is as most or success. I think I linked the two together and said, okay, once I'm successful, then I'd be happy. And I linked all of it to my career. And that was a mistake. <laughs> and I got into um, a divorce. I've been living the first 40 years of my life, just kind of like dabbling around. No big issues, no big problems, no big obstacles. It's just like life was smooth, right? And all of a sudden I find myself in a divorce that uh, nothing near smooth it, it was horrible now we're good today we're good we can do parties together with the kids and stuff but back when it happened not so much and we should probably have done this a couple of years sooner than we did so in the meantime I spent a lot of time going I need to get out of this and then go oh wow well maybe it's just me being difficult Maybe I'm just being too demanding. Maybe I'm just being too this and this and that. And I kind of convinced myself of that because looking when I look in the hindsight, I can see it's because it was easier, right? I didn't have the courage to actually stand up to the, I knew it would be a huge confrontation and I didn't have the courage at the point. So it was easier just to blame myself. And all of a sudden you believe your own stories about yourself, right? So you, I took on that identity and it's so far from who I am. And at some point, a couple of friends that don't even, they know each other, but they only see each other when they meet at my place. They, they said to me on uh, different occasions, you need to get out of there. This is ruining your personality. And, and that's when 
it dawned on me, okay, maybe it's not just me. Now I need to actually take some action here and get out of this. And it was a mess. And it was the first burnout I ever, I mean, it was hard. So I suffered from burnout and the whole ordeal with going through this meant that he also took me to court because he wanted one out of the three kids we have. So I didn't have time to deal with that burnout, right? <laughs> you don't know how strong you are until strong is your only option. So, so I had to deal with the court. I had, I had to deal with my daughter being kind of like, she was 12 at the 10, the first time, the second time he tried, she was almost 12. But this was so hard on her and I had to deal with that. No time for me. So after everything was settled and he lost in court and, and things kind of settled down a little bit, bam, second burnout because now I was really wiped out. And, and I was just, I've never been in a position like that. The first time it was stressed. The second time I was just being completely passive. I was just, I could sit on a chair and looking out into nowhere for hours and, and absolutely no activity in my brain. Nothing was happening. And I was at a point where I'm not sure who fed my kids all days. <laughs> so, so it was really, really, um, I, I, it's hard to describe because I've never been in a situation where I didn't have the ability to find a solution or at least a next step. And I think that's what freaked me out. So that's how all this started. At some point, you just need to do something. And I was I was placed in a seminar uh, by my, my company at the time when I was working in corporate. And Brendan Bichal was there and he was one of the speakers. There were like 20 speakers over four days. And Brendan Bichal was one of them. And I was not paying attention to anything that was going on. I was on my chair, but I was not there. <laughs> And all of a sudden he got on stage and he, I don't know what he did, but he did something that caught my attention. All of a sudden I started paying attention. I was like, okay, I need to do something. He, he, he can help me here. So that was my way into the high performance world. And it was a step-by-step -step in the beginning. Uh, I got his master course, high performance master course. And I just, I went through it over and over again. And within months, my whole, I got my motivation back. I got my fire back. I got my drive back. I got my, my fighter instinct back. And I was not where I wanted to be, but I was way better off than I was before. And all of a sudden, at some point I woke up and like, Ooh, I'm even better than before my burnout. This is working. And that's why I got so involved in it. And people started taking notice, right? They started to Hey, what's what's going on? You changed. Yeah, ain't it cool? <laughs> and and I started helping people. And eventually I got certified by Brendan. So now I have a piece of paper <laughs> that I can actually I follow the process, right? And so that's that's how I ended up as a coach for personal development, personal growth, and and mindset coaching, really. That's what it all is about. And eventually some business coaching came along because people started asking how I did it. So that's just my experience that I kind of like share with people. Mm -hmm. So you said something that I think is so important because when we don't take care of ourselves and we have so many episodes on, you know, avoiding burnout, decreasing stress, all that good juicy stuff, but, and I will link all those in the show notes for the listeners, but you said something so important and that was, you were doing nothing and it wasn't until you took action that things started to change. And I think so many times people get stuck in a place and it really is taking action that moves us forward. Like we can't do anything if we're still, we have to move. Yes. Uh, there's only two where nothing stands still, right? So you can move forward or backwards. <laughs> this is the only option or sideways, but that's the only option you, you really have and I think the art is to learn to detect when things are not going in the direction you want. And don't wait for a burnout. I will not recommend this strategy no. to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> but, but more often than not, we don't move until it hurts more to stay than to move. Mm -hmm. But once you can make this mindset shift 
that you can actually by design move forward and have fun doing it, even though it's kind of scary sometimes to step out of the comfort zone. Once you find out how much fun it is on the other side, you, you're going to want to keep doing that, but it takes a mindset shift to, to kind of take ownership of the thought that nothing is going to kill you. It might be scary because it's, it's unknown and you don't know the, the outcome of something you want to try out. But I usually say to people, think about when you learn how to ride a bike. How many times did you fall and scrape your knees before you got it? Now we're grown up and we go like, I'm not, I don't want to do that. What if people laugh? When you're a kid, you don't worry about laugh, people laughing at you. You just worry about you want to learn how to ride that bike. And you keep trying and you keep trying. And you get a little bit better every time you try and all of a sudden it's there. Mm -hmm. But it's like that with all new things. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really stepping out of our comfort zone, right? And that is a mindset shift to let go of control. And yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and do a reality check on your fears. Yeah. Are, are they really real? Or is it just in your head? Is it is it a reality? Is it a market reality? Like, is somebody other than you doing what you want to do? I bet you somebody is. And somebody, there's a lot of people doing what you want to do, uh, no matter what it is. And some people are really good. And some people are not so good, but they're on a journey, right? So look at the market reality. Have anybody over the age of 50 gotten a job? Yes. So don't tell me you can't get a job just because you're over 50, because people are doing it every day. Can you do it? Well, if you set your mind to it, you can. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think we're the, we are the ones that stop ourselves. Like nobody else stops us. It's what's in our head that stops us. So my great, let's talk about, so your book, um, if you want success, be happy. What are the steps people can take to find happiness? Uh, in or the book, it's, it's put in four steps. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different if you work one-on-one -on -one with me, but, but to kind of like simplify it because I didn't want to write 1200 pages that people would never read. So this book is very micro learning based. It's it's to the point, not too much fluff, no scientific wobbly dap in, to, to take up space and, and put in words. So I put it in four categories. And the first one is, is find your vision. You, you need to know where you're going. I mean, if you want success with whatever you're trying to achieve, whether it's a, a career goal or a personal goal, you, you still need to know what you're headed for. Otherwise, it will be impossible for you to design a road to go to get there. So, and, and most people, they have a pretty clear vision on what they want to do career-wise. So they say, okay, I want this title or this amount of money or whatever it is that they're going for. Um, but the thing is that not too many people know who they want to become. What kind of person do they want to grow into? What really matters in the core of their soul? It's, it's the purpose part of clarity. And who do they want to become? What kind of legacy do, do they want to leave behind? Not too many people worry about that. So they go with the flow and what they were accustomed to by their environment growing up, their parents' opinions and stuff, and other people's assumed expectations to them because we rarely ask. So we just assume that they expect a, third, a certain thing from us. Mm -hmm. So people go that direction, but it does if it conflicts with who they really are and who they want to become, they will never reach their target because they will keep blocking themselves because it's it, it tears them apart. It doesn't feel right. And you can go along with not feeling right for a certain amount of time, but most people probably experience this it's when you're frustrated and irritated and in general just hate people <laughs> and you don't know why and people say what's with you so, I don't know. and you get even more frustrated that is your actions not being aligned with your core values so it's really important to to start by being completely clear about who do you want to become and then once you know that, you know what's important to you, what's your inner integrity, your core values, whatever name you want to put to it, then you can design your career and make sure 
that you don't compromise yourself in the process. So, so that is step number one is clarity, always clarity. If you don't have that, everything you put after that doesn't really matter because it might take off in a completely wrong direction. Mm-hmm. And, and step number two is optimizing your health. It's being a better version of you. And when I say health, it's more than just marathons and broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I say health, people go like, I hate broccoli. <laughs> it, it's, it's, uh, it's your mental health, it's your emotional health, and it's, of course, also your physical health. But I would say there's one thing that is far more important than both exercise and diet, and that is sleep. Mm-hmm. And sleep is totally underrated. Like, it's... So, so and also just to recharge give yourself time to recharge you gotta take care of number one first i didn't do that and it didn't work out for me well (laughs) uh we we're so good at taking care of everybody else right everybody else's needs the kids the spouse the in-laws the neighbor are the aunt's goldfish and everybody is in line before us and when we're done with everybody else and everything else no more time, no more resources. Oh, well, I take care of me next day, next week, next month. And I had one, she said, oh, I would love to have a, just a spa day at home. Like, why don't you do that? Well, I don't have time. Well, make the time. Put it in the calendar, because if it's not in the calendar, it doesn't count. It's not going to happen. So you got to take care of number one first, before you can take care of everybody else. Are you going to wind up with me? And like me with a burnout, and you can take care of absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. And the problem is, it's it's horrible to be the one suffering from burnout. But it was way worse for my kids. Yeah, they were paying the real price, and we we kind of forget that a little bit that that we're not the ones paying the biggest price when we burn out. It's the people that we love the most, mm-hmm. and that's worth taking into consideration. When you think you don't believe you don't have time to take care of yourself, you need to do that because otherwise you will not be able to take care of the people you love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And we've had a couple people on the show previously who have experienced that level of burnout as well. And the same thing, it's like realizing that you have to take the initiative to care for yourself at all levels, right? Emotional, mental, physical, but that sleep is hands down something that everybody agrees that's been on the show is so incredibly important. Yes. And I think it's the only topic in the world that all scientists agree upon. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you do have these, these people who are, Oh, how did you achieve this? Well, I was in the 5.00 AM club where, you know, you you get sleep from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. and then you're done and you just go, 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 go. But eventually what happens? They run out of steam. Like it's just yes. not a model that is sustainable. It, it is not. The problem is that people who do that, they don't realize themselves how low their cognitive, cognitive abilities are mm-hmm. because it becomes their new normal. And, and when I coach uh, top leaders, I have a lot of top leaders and, and they, they kind of like, they brag about it. I only need four or five hours of sleep. I'm doing great. Look at where I'm at. Like, do you have any idea where you could have been if you were actually sleeping along the way? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and, and we can always trans. The thing is that the career seemed to be what we prioritize, at least until a certain age. Uh, then it flips a little bit, but we prioritize career, uh, and we we do it um, on. It hurts the family life. It hurts the relationships, the the friends, the deep connections. So because they're always kind of there, so they can wait, right? Career can't because if I don't grab this promotion, somebody else will, and I count that nobody grabs my spouse. <laughs> but somebody will. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if I don't baby him, somebody will. I mean, 
but we kind of like just take for granted that they're going to be there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but it, that is that is not the case. But I think I got sidetracked. Why did we start with this? <laughs> well, we I think we're heading towards number three. So if you want to just we've we've talked about you know self care, but yeah. not even I, I guess that phrase self care is. Um, I think it's overused, but that idea of taking care of self so that we can take care of other people and sleep yeah, being exactly, a priority. Exactly. Uh, but the, the, the third one is take back command. Mm -hmm. We are so good at just letting other people decide for us. And we just go with the flow, going through the motions. And nothing's kind of happening. Nothing good, nothing bad. We're just flatlined. But the thing is, we don't thrive there. We don't. We survive there, but we don't thrive. And it's a huge, huge difference. And a lot of the time, we just, we don't even know why we do what we do because it's just, I don't know. When I ask people, why do you have the job you have? I don't know. It pays the bills. <laughs> but it completely lacks enthusiasm. You need to take back command and be captain of your own ship. I know it sounds kind of like cliche, but then I guess cliches are cliches for a reason. <laughs> but you, you need to know what you want and steer towards that and do what you need to do. And that means that takes a lot of courage because now you have to, one, you have to learn to say no to things that don't serve you anymore. And that might be people around you it might be your th thinking pattern it might be a tasks that other people are accustomed for you to do because their life is a mess so they throw it on you and i have not ca i can't count how many times i told people that other people's lack of ability to plan their life is not your emergency just because you're good at what you do and and people are like, oh, it's not? No, it's not. <laughs> you don't have to accept all gifts that come your way. You can say no. Uh -huh. um, but but th saying no is something that people find really, really hard to do. But it, it's necessary. And it's necessary to, to clean up in your surroundings as well. You are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. So you should choose them really carefully. And my coach said to me, if people do not support your dream, they are by definition your enemy. And it sounds so harsh, but there's a lot of truth to this. Because if they don't support me, they're going to do everything they can to pull me back into their comfort zone. It's easier for them to pull me back than it is for them to step up themselves. Mm -hmm. And if you notice people who say that can't be done, they have either failed and never tried again, or they never even start. They never even tried to begin with. Those are the people who's going to keep trying to keep you down because they don't like it too much if you, if you surpass them. Mm -hmm. And, and those are not the people you want to build when you're building towards your dream and you're building your life the way you want it. Because you can actually have success in career and, a, and satisfaction in life and wake up every day excited about life. You can have both. You just need to navigate it. Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it really does become about who you surround yourself with. Like if you were around like-minded people, who have similar values and morals and ethics and integrity, you're you're going to be more likely to propel yourself forward just because of the sheer fact that they're motivating you, they're inspiring you versus when you're with these naysayer, naysayers, you feel stuck, you feel heavy, you feel down, you feel like- You feel like you possible. have to defend your opinion and your dream. You're always in the defense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the thing is that if you take people in general, I don't care who they are, but any person in the world, if you look at their friends, the, their surroundings, they all have the same size house, the same size car, this almost the same amount of kids and the same income. 
So that's who you surround you with are people that are like-minded, but who are like you and that's comfortable. But if you want to grow, you need to find somebody who's further along than you. And the good thing about this is that people who are further along, it's not going to laugh at you. They're going to help you up because they've been there and they know how tough it is and somebody helped them. So the people who are standing in your way are already behind you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love how you just said that. That And that is so true. And we really do need someone to aspire to, but to hold on to as a mentor or a guide, because we don't know what we don't know. And that, that yeah. again, sounds so cliche, but it is so incredibly true. When we're working in things, we don't see what the potential is. We're stuck in just this box versus the bigger picture. Yeah, that is so, so true. One of my coaches said, if you want success, it's 80% inner work and 20% action. Mm-hmm. And that's, I really, that just resonated with me so, so well. Because once you got your inner work laid out for you and you you, you nail this, it, it's a process, of course. It's, I don't think you ever get done because there's always the next level. But the thing is that your perspective change. Mm-hmm. The, the things that you see, the opportunities that you see are different when your inner world is aligned. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it makes so much sense. And yet most people do it the other way around. Yeah. They well, take 80% you... action, but it's action in all over the place in all kinds of directions. And there's no, there's no system to it. Yeah, yeah. And I think when you are around people that are the same level versus a slightly higher or way higher, you tend to compare yourself more versus aspiring more. And the more we compare, the the more we feel like things aren't as possible, I think. You know, I think comparison just truly is one of those things that drags you down to the depths versus pushing you forward. I, I think competition can be really help healthy to push us to want to be better. But when we get stuck in that rut of comparison, there's no growth. No. And and say hi to social media because <laughs> this is really a killer for all motivation and momentum yeah. and energy and happiness. Because we open up a phone the first thing we do in the morning. Open the phone and we enter other people's world. Mm-hmm. And we forget to just focus on our own. So we already... Uh, behind when we wake up and we compare ourselves to what we see on social media and it's really the truth or at least it's not the whole truth because people don't post when everything sucks yeah and and even the best of people have days that suck I mean yeah. so, so it's snapshots right it's the, those little happy moments but it's and we get this feeling oh this person lives this amazing life yeah, but they still have to do laundry, yeah. right? And we, we, we forget <laughs> that. <laughs> we forget that. It's so, so true. We that other people's world first. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm so glad you brought that up because that's why I'm so passionate about building the foundation of your business without social media. It, it's oh. truly possible to grow your business without social media. I met a woman not long ago who has this just phenomenal business, phenomenal business. She's not on social media. She doesn't have a presence online. Most people don't even know who she is, but yet she has built this incredible business. And it's, you know, there's so much reality to that. If we can step away from the distractions and the chaos and and the wannabes, then we can focus on what needs to be done to build ourselves and our businesses versus just thinking about, oh, I should do that. Or I wish I had that, or I should be more like her or I should do more like that. And, you know, it's craziness. Yeah. And it gets confusing and it gets frustrating. And then you focus on, you get what you focus on. Yeah. Right. So you need to focus on what you want, what you can and what you have. Yes. Yes. And that's where gratitude comes in. When we look at what we have, what we've already accomplished and we have that sense of gratitude, I mean, gratitude is a natural antidepressant. So the more grateful we are, the, the more happy we'll feel. And yes. 
That's and the easier it is to succeed because you will be focused on what matters. Yes, yes. Okay, right. so <laughs> okay, so my rep, what is number four before we go too far down this whole comparison <laughs> gratitude track? Oh, we could be here for three weeks without getting bored, couldn't we? <laughs> we could. <laughs> the, the last one is, is fuel resilience. You need to toughen up. <laughs> I don't care who you are. You need to toughen up. Uh, to, today's youth are really, uh, we didn't do them many favors. Uh, in, in Denmark, we call them curling kids because the parents swept the way in front of them. So they never had to, they never had to, be tough and now they're not so but but fueling resilience is when we're talking to my age it's a different thing a little bit but it's about being able to pivot and being able to to sort in things coming into your life worry is the ultimate waste of time it really oh. is because there's only two choices when something happens is it within your control? Can you do something about it? If you can, no time for worry, time to act. If you can't, no need to worry, won't change nothing. So so it's as simple as that. And, and this remembering this one can save people from so many frustrations. Just say, okay, can I do something about it? No, okay, don't worry about it. Focus on what you can do. And... Yeah. And being able to pivot fast. So let's say that you, um, let's say you are on a diet and everybody have tried that, I think. <laughs> and, and, and you've been doing so well. And now it's Thursday and you're really proud of yourself and your friends invite you over and they're having pizza and you go and you accident, you have a snack accident, right? You have a snack accident <laughs> and you eat a slice of pizza. <laughs> Now you have two choices. You can go like, okay, I'm still good. I've been good for the rest of the week. I can have that piece of pizza without feeling bad about it. Or you can go like, no, I miss it all up. And now it doesn't matter. So I might as well have ice cream and like, and I start over on Monday. But when you do that, you start over every single time. Just, just, Acknowledge that you're human, right? And say that your hundred percent might vary from day to day, but as long as you can say I did the best I could, then you should be really happy with yourself. And with for whatever reason you lose half a day to net Netflix and Doritos, don't beat yourself up about it. Go like, okay, probably my body told me I needed to just relax and do absolutely nothing, and go like, be okay with it. But know that you need to catch up the rest of the week. So you can't just lose days and then you just lose days. You, you uh -huh. need to have a plan for how to pivot and catch up. And you'd be surprised how much productivity you can put in to a very short amount of time if it is systemized. If you take away distractions and notifications and emails and just have like a focus block of time where you dedicate to a certain task. You can get so much done. And so it's it's about being able to pivot fast and don't let it hurt you. Somebody brings you bad news. You can, you can cry for two hours, you can cry for two months. And the longer you do it, the harder it is for you to get back on track. Mm -hmm. So ask yourself, is this way of thinking going to change anything for the better? Is it going to serve me or going to serve whoever around me? Probably not, right? It's, it's a rhetorical question, but you, you have to ask yourself, what is this doing to me right now? Okay, so how can I feel better by shifting my focus? And this is so, so, so important. It is. And I, you know, I use that example too in my five C's of journaling method to navigate anxiety or mindset. And the, the reality is so many of our thoughts are unrealistic. Nobody else would be thinking about us the way we're thinking about us. So it's nobody another, cares. No, it's another way to just check, you know, for checks and balances with your mind and your thoughts. Like, would anybody else be thinking this? And if the answer is no, it's time to take action to change those thoughts. 
because it's otherwise you're you just get yourself into that embedment of stuck you know like you're in that yes, burnt exactly. and mire in the mud and you can't take another step forward so you have to start with what you're thinking and then yes. be able to to take the action to move yourself forward because it takes all three right mindset strategy and action in order yes. to find success but i think what i love what your the title of your book if you want success be happy because happiness increases productivity so yes. if we follow these four steps, we're more likely to think positive, have more positive emotions and feelings, and then we'll be able to take more productive action, make better choices, and we'll have better outcomes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, and what you said about getting stuck, that just brought something to me because if, if I screw up, nobody cares. Nobody knows me. I mean, it doesn't even matter who you are. Like Brendan Bouchard, he's he's really known in, in a lot of big parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And he can still go to lunch and nobody knows him. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. And, and if people get caught up in one mistake you make, don't pay attention. I always say don't accept criticism from someone you wouldn't ask for advice. Mm, I love that. Yeah. So why is it that we get so caught up in what somebody else thinks? And we have so high demands to ourselves. We would never demand the same thing about the people. Never. It's like, that's fine. You don't have to worry about it. Don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's only when we have to do it ourselves. Then it has to be perfect. But again, perfect is just another word for fear. I agree. I agree. Yeah. But and it is true, is... if you have this plan, this strategy, and you have a positive mindset without being toxic positive, because you can do that as well, mm -hmm. but but you need to kind of take ownership and, and shift your, your way of doing things accordingly, then you get more energy, you get more happiness, you get more joy, and you get more opportunities, and things just start rolling your way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it really does. I'll start with what you believe and what your thoughts are. Um, oh, you just mentioned something, this, this whole movement of toxic positivity for mm -hmm. people who haven't heard of that. Would you just elaborate on that for a second? Yeah, it can be, if you're toxic positive, it, it can be, it, now I'm, I'm not talking if it's me versus you, for instance, I'm talking just with yourself, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can, you can tell yourself a story that you're positive while in, not treating what is negative so you kind of just like put a positive lid on the negative and the negative get to boil inside of you and all of a sudden it's going to explode so that's probably the best way to describe it yeah so and so you can't you can't fake it uh, so the thing that fake it till you make it i kind of don't like that because sometimes either. people get really uh they, they get caught in it and they mm -hmm. they kind of get stuck in in the cage yeah, absolutely. And I think the more you try to fake it, the more you're almost living a lie because you yes. know, deep inside that it's not real. And then you feel, yes. you feel like a fraud and then you feel like, oh, now nobody's going to trust me because you don't trust yourself. And it just becomes this vicious cycle. Okay. Yes, so killing you right. from within. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. I say it's, it's, it's killing you from within. Yeah. Then it's better to start with the little things that you can be positive about, like truly be positive about. I don't care if it's a ladybug or if it's that the sun got up this morning, no clouds, or you just got out of bed. I mean, it, it doesn't really matter how small it is, just as long as you focus on that thing mm -hmm. and say, well, at least I got out of bed this morning. That is something. I'm breathing. Everything is working. All my body parts are working. You can shake them up and say, all my body parts are working. Don't do it in front of a mirror. It's going to put you right back in depression. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're so great. You're so great. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, the visuals. <laughs> <laughs> all right. On that, I think we're going to wrap up. <laughs> all right. But Will you tell the listeners, my Brit, where they can find you and connect with you, learn more from you? Yes. 
Um, I'm on LinkedIn and otherwise they can find me and, and get on our newsletter or get the book uh, on www.marbert.coach. And I will put that link in the show notes so you guys don't have to try to figure out how to spell that. Spell my name, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I, lo I love the conversation because I think everything really does start from within. And I just did a keynote address on this same topic a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, the one thing I, I emphasized is that happiness is a choice and no one else is going to make you happy and you don't have the control to make someone else happy. It has to come from within. It has to be a choice. But the more you choose to take positive action, to have a positive mindset, the more success you're going to have in the end. So I yes, think this conversation is something that we all need on repeat as a reminder. So listeners, if you found this information helpful, inspiring, if you laughed a little bit, share it with a friend, share it with somebody you know who is struggling. Maybe they're experiencing burnout. Maybe they've just lost someone and they are in that phase of, of crying and crying and crying instead of trying to get out of bed in the morning and notice the little things of positive that are positive in their life. And please, if you would, leave us a rating and review because that's how I get more great guests from all around the world, just like <laughs> my Brit. So thank you so much for being here, my Brett. It was an honor to have you. And listeners, go go connect with her on LinkedIn because she puts out some really, really great, inspiring and powerful content. So thank you for being here. And I will see you, you all. Thank you for having me. And yes. throw some confetti on whoever needs it. That's right. Throw confetti on whoever needs it. <laughs> yeah. oh. All right. Thanks, listeners. I will see you all next week.